Okay, we're here with a man playing guitar. Who are you? Josh from Toxic. Okay, we're gonna talk about Toxic. So, uh, what were the origins of Toxic? Um, Toxic began life as a cover band uh, in Westchester County, New York, which is a suburb of New York City. Um, early 80s, a uh, friend of mine, bass player, and I wanted to work, and we got together to play cover songs. And just to make it very quickly, because it was about a four or five year period, um, after playing covers for a few years, we started writing songs. We just began our writing. And um, the jump from, that band was called Tokyo, the jump from Tokyo to Toxic happened because we changed our writing style. We, we had been playing basically power metal and glam and whatever we could get work with. And now it was 1984, 1985, and we were starting to play much heavier music. So Toxic is the brainchild or the, the, the second iteration of that group going from a cover band to an original band, and I've been doing it ever since. And that was in 1985, 1984. How long before you got your first album out, or what led to it? Um, so we, we, we went through a couple of uh, uh, lineups to get to the first record. Um, and we did a demo called Wasteland, which has actually been re-released since. Uh, you can get that, it's available. We uh, did our demo in 1986, I think it was, 1986 for Wasteland or 1985, and we were signed within a year to Roadrunner and did World Circus the following okay. year. You want to show the first album and, yes, and, and say Absolutely. anything we need to know about that record? So well, it's it's probably, I would say, maybe the better known album of our of what we've got. Um, mm -hmm. it, it did pretty well. It was actually well received. Yep, so here it is. Yeah, Boys and Girls, that's what it was like. Yeah. There we were. It's a bunch of young thrashers. Um, so yeah, it was a, a collection of uh, really energetic, very original, I, I still think, and people tell me all the time, uh, material. It was pretty unique. We had, a, we had a, an interesting combination of speed metal slash thrash, but was still classical rock vocals. So instead of having somebody gargling uh, or you know coming out and being guttural, we had a real singer. And, um, and not that the other person isn't a real singer, but you know what I mean, like we had someone who could really sing. And it was, it was different. Actually played last night, uh, Realm, uh, a label band, and, you know, as you know, yes. Realm played last night. Would you like, I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm looking at you, I should be looking at the camera. Um, label mates of ours, Realm, another progressive technical thrash band, and they were great. It was really, really great to see them too and hang out with them a bit. But, um, it was kind of a, a, an era right then, and we were part of a small group of artists and bands that were doing this kind of music. We weren't the only ones to kind of come out with this. And again, it is progressive, it is thrashing and speed metal, um, and it's still very melodic. So that was World Circus. How did you uh, promote World, World Circus? Was there a tour involved? No, actually, um, we didn't have a, a real tour per se. What we had was, uh, we did small runs, went to Europe a couple of times. Uh, we did play the Dynamo Open Air mm -hmm. um, in one of its earlier formations, 1988. And we got to play with Exodus and Laz Rocket and Candle Mass and Sabbath and some other great bands. That was a really great day. Um, but we didn't have a tour. We never did get a tour for that. Uh, but, it, but the record sold pretty well relative to what it was and that was enough to get us out there. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't stop there, there was record number two. Which is? Yep, right there. Think, think this. I uh, think this is the second record. Comes out two years later. It's released in 1989. Um, slightly different lineup this time around. We have added a guitar player in John Donnelly. Mike Sanders, the original vocalist, has left and is replaced by Charles Sabin. Um, and this is a sophomore release. This is your second album. It's always different than the first album. Um, the first album you have a lot of time to write the material for. The second record, you're writing it after the first record and you're kind of trying to figure yourself out. Um, and this was a growth album. We, we changed uh, quite a bit on this record, our writing style. It was much more technical, much more progressive. Um, still heavy, uh, still very guitar-centric. This is where I started to really 
settle into my role as a as a shredder, for lack of a better word. Um, and this was also where I started to get into larger arrangements, big vocals, layered guitars, etc. Yeah. Uh, also, you did tour the United States for this album. This did. We have a tour. We yes. did. We had direct support for King Diamond on this record, which was a really great time. In fact, the last time we played in Milwaukee was on that tour. Ironically enough, we're playing here tonight. Um, and yeah, we, we toured Europe as well with that. We did get we had a tour both here and abroad for Pinkus. And I think at this point your uh, relationship with Roadrunner ended, right? Because yes. So and so what happens next? There's the a big mystery there. Okay, so well then there's a then life kind of kicks in and uh, all of us go our own ways um, for about a decade. I never personally I'll speak for myself here because I'm the one that's being filmed. Um, I never stopped doing music. I just stopped doing toxic. Uh, I kept going. I put out a number of solo records and worked on television and film score. Uh, I actually had a stint with Hulu uh, when they first came online. I worked for Hulu for a few years. So I, I stayed busy in the music business. And then in 2007, uh, Toxic started to come back around. Um, but, but what that triggered that? Social media. Somehow our logo, I think, is probably as much a part of why we're back as anything. Uh, seems like our logo caught on and lots of battle jackets out there with toxic patches. And when MySpace came on, uh, it just, this is when we became aware as a unit that people were still interested in our music. You know, we had no idea that people were even listening to us, much less wanted to hear more. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty exciting to find. And of course, right at that moment, you know, 2007, my kids are you know, 10 years old, 11 years old. So I couldn't really give it the time it really deserved. But it's been a st slow and steady process since then, and here we are in 2022, and we're getting ready to, well, I'm jumping ahead here, but we're yeah. getting ready to release our first third full-length album. Okay, but there was some music in between that yes, came out was. recently. Yes, so there let's, was. Let's, let's talk about that. So, in the interim, so 2007 rolls around, as I started to say, and we get it back together. And initially, we were, go we're filming a documentary um, we're going to be part of a documentary that's based on us called This Is Toxic. Um, and it was uh, being done by a Discovery Channel producer, somebody who does a lot of productions for Discovery Channel. And briefly, we got the band together around the documentary, which isn't a real reason to put a band back together. And unfortunately, because of that, I really feel that it didn't, it wasn't successful, it didn't come to anything because we weren't doing it for the right reason. We really didn't have music in mind. We were trying to do something for the camera. Um, but it's, it planted the seed. It got the, it got the ball rolling. And, you know, little bit by little bit, that's, you know, let's say four or five years goes by. And by that point, now my kids are 15 and 16. My children are growing up and I can devote time to it because Toxic is technical. I have to practice my instrument to really be able to play this stuff properly. Um, and it took me a bit of time to get back online. Then I started re congealing and started bringing the band back together and trying to figure out who could make it and who couldn't. And uh, we went out the first time with Mike Sanders, who was the singer from World Circus. Um, and he also sang on this first EP, which is called Inhumanity. Mm -hmm. Other members in this particular lineup, uh, Bill Bodley, who's now the bass player in Flotsam and Jetsam, and Jason Bittner, who's now the full-time drummer in Overkill. This was a pretty cool lineup. I had, a, I had a very cool group of guys that I was working with there. And the album covers by Mario Lopez, who did all of the artwork on our last three. Um, and this is a collection of uh, four, five songs. It was gonna be a full-length record, and it ended up getting chopped down to an EP because Mike, the singer, left. We had a South American tour that we did, um, and when we got back, he decided he no longer wanted to do this. So we stopped recording. We cut this down to an EP, and we released it. Um, to some success, our, our fans liked it very much. We didn't push it too hard because it was self-made, but people liked it. And then, two years later, we came out with this. And this is called Breaking Class. This is our second EP. Okay, and this one comes out in 2017. And this lineup consists of yours truly, Charlie Sabin, the singer from Think This. And now we've got Bill Bodley still playing bass at that point, but we've introduced James DiMaria as our drummer. 
and James came on after uh, Jason left, went and worked with Flotsam and Jetsam for a bit. James, James jumped in for the South American tour and ended up staying on and has, has now become a fundamental member of Toxic. He does a lot of the business and everything else. But this is Breaking Class and actually, um, Shane plays on this. You know what, Shane is actually on this. I started to say that Billy was on it, but mm -hmm. excuse me. Because Bill was there when we started the recording, but Bill left, and actually the finished product is with Shane, so this has Shane on it too. Billy went on the Latin American tour. This was like right at that transition period. So Shane is over here warming up. If you wanted to spin the camera around, that would be Shane Bulos right there. There you go, Shane, say hello. Wave, wave, wave. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're back. <laughs> I'm suspecting base yeah, 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 exactly. You caught him off guard. So yep. there it is, one more time with that lineup. So it's me, Charlie, sorry, Shane, and James. And uh, again, four songs, very cool. We liked it a lot, uh, but it was sort of left over from when Mike was in the band. Um, and we weren't really feeling it for a full length record. So that's how it ended up being a Once again, EP. A yep. So, moving ahead, shortly thereafter, we go and we play Dynamo in 2017 with Charlie. Um, we have a tough time at the gig. Um, turns out Charlie's not really into touring anymore. Second original singer, second singer doesn't want to get out on the road anymore. So, we induct a guy named Ron Iglesias, who a lot of you may know at this point. Ron is pretty popular. He's got other acts that he works with. He works with a band called Paralysis. Um, he had he had his own band for a while, Xenophile, which was pretty popular as well. So Ron is, is well known in the Jersey, New York metal scene, um, and is a, a wonderful singer, a great guitar player, just an overall really killer musician. So we got him in for this, and this is Kinetic Closure, and what this is, is this was with Charlie leaving and, and Mike leaving, um, we were really at the end of something, it was sort of the end of an era. And so the name of the record is Kinetic Closure and it signifies really just that, that we're still in motion but we're closing off a chapter. Um, and so we covered four songs from each of the first two original records and we added two new songs again with Ron on vocals. So it was kind of a best of record in a way, a sort of live studio recording for the classic songs and two new songs introduced and those all those three EPs went into this box, box set, set yes. which came out in 2018 on the No Dust label, Dutch label No Dust, and it's called Three Works. And it's still available. You can still uh, go to Amazon and get this. And uh, you know what, if you're a fan of metal in general, but specifically thrash, technical thrash, this is, this is worth owning. This is a really killer package, if I do say so myself. I mean, obviously I'm biased, but you know, the feedback on this has been nothing but really positive. People love the material, and it's cool because the three EPs back to back really show a progression. Like, we are growing, you can see that we're moving. And now, now, we are on the verge of putting out our third full length album. There it is. And uh, our third full length record, which I can release the name of, uh, will be on Massacre Records, and it's called Dis Morta, D I S M O R T A, which is Latin slang for this death. And, uh, it's got Ron on vocals, of course, Shane and James on drums and bass, and me playing guitar, and then we've also added a guitar player. We've got a Dutch guitar player, Eric Van Druten, who started with us last year on tour and has now become a full member. So you've got a, a five-piece version of Toxic coming out with the third album, which is very much like, from what people tell me, an extension of Think This. People seem to feel that it really sort of captures a lot of the Think This energy but that it's darker and heavier and a little more modern, etc. But that we—it's an obvious progression from that last full-length concert. Right? What would you say keeps you going throughout all these years? Well, I—you know—I don't have much of a choice. I, it seems to be a bit of a compulsion for me. It's just what I do. Um, I love to make music. I love to play guitar, and I have a connection with the Toxic fans. These records, all of these records, the, you know, this, these, these all, you know. I'm the primary writer for Toxic. It's always been my baby, my brainchild. So, um, 
people who are fans of Toxic, I have a connection with them because they've been listening to me these year, all these years with these records. Uh, and I feel a kinship to that. I do. I feel close to, to our audience because of that. And, um, you know, as someone who's aging, I'm getting older, but so is metal. And uh, it's really like, it feels like a good place to be. I, I really enjoy this. I mean, I'm happier now doing this, and I think we're better now than we've ever been. I think that uh, we've got a better interaction with our audience. Yep. I, I just, there's no reason not to keep going. I mean, there's nothing else I'd rather do, honestly. Um, what are some favorite memories from the years spent touring, playing, rehearsing, recording? Well, sure. I mean, you know, there's, there's some famous, you know, some interactions with some very famous people that were cool. Like, we played a number of shows with Pantera when they were at the end of supporting Power Metal before the Cowboys came out. Um, and I got to hang out with them quite a bit, and I was pretty good friends with Daryl, like we got along really well, he was a good character, big KISS fan, so am I, we all smoked pot and we just had a really great time, so I got to hang with the Pantera guys quite a bit, became very good friends. I'm friends with Bonjar Zombeck uh, from Watchtower, Ron, Ron and I you know, became friends back in World Circus days before there was internet, he and I would spend hours on the phone going back and forth talking guitar. Um, and of course, you know, become very close, intertwined. Our drummer James DeMarant plays drums in Heathen as well now. And so that's really put us in close circulation with the Bay Area guys. So I have a regular interaction with like Exodus people and Testament and like we, Toxic has really been sort of, we've taken a step up actually. Uh, and I kind of feel what we deserve to, we, it's where we should be. Um, but because we were gone for so long, we had ground to make up. But it seems like we've done a pretty good job of that. And I think when the new record comes out, it will really establish ourselves. Um, but as far as other memories go, obviously big shows are, are, a bit, are always a memory. Dynamo is a, is a hot spot for me personally. I love our shows at the Dynamo festivals. They're so much fun. I am particularly fond of the Netherlands and the, and the Netherlands audience. So anytime I get to go to Holland and hang out with my friends and family there, I'm happy to do it. Um, some of my best memories in my life are spent there. Um, I mean, it's just, it's all good. It's hard to pick what would be the best memory because they're all good memories. I don't really have anything negative to say with Toxin. I love everyone who's come and gone. I don't really have any resentments towards anyone. Um, I'm just moving with my music, man, and lucky enough to do it. Are there any regrets? Sure. I mean, you know, uh, I, I think I expressed one earlier on when I talked about letting the music go, letting the metal go for a while, and raising my kids. Although, it's what you have to do when you've got kids. You've got to make a choice. You've got to be responsible or be a dirtbag and, and selfish, and I'm not. So, I spent that time with my children. But if I had any regret, it's maybe that I drifted so far from where I had been, because we did have a pretty good name for ourselves. Could have probably built on it, but that's okay. Again, no, that's about as close as I get to a regret. Thank you. I guess uh, to conclude this, maybe uh, play us a riff or a few. <laughs> uh, well, not plugged in, so. The acoustic version? Um, well, it's impossible to hear too with these guys up, upstairs. Uh, let's see here. Uh, gosh, what would be good? I don't know. Can you even hear that, Eric? I don't think you can. False prophets from the circus. So I know it was like a day out of work and I had to go by Which is a little bit of a bitch because it's got that sh that skip in it. So uh, up to speed, which is I think 185 BPM. Pretty, pretty tricky, little right hand thing. Thank you! Yes, sir.